How often do you think about water and interact with water just on a regular basis? In the morning, you get up, you shower, you brush your teeth, you go downstairs and cook your breakfast, wash your dishes, you do your laundry, and you water your yard. When you leave your house to go about your day, you'll interact with water countless times over. In a water crisis, this entire dynamic changes. In the morning, you get up and you brush your teeth with dry toothpaste, and you shower with a bucket to collect excess water. You go downstairs and you cook your breakfast that isn't water intensive, and you can't wash your dishes. You can do your laundry maybe once a week, and watering your yard is a finable offense. And when you leave your house, it'll be in a city that is buckling down and stretching resources until the tap runs dry. My name is Will Sheldon, and I'm a senior geology student here at OU. Over the past year, I've been conducting undergraduate research on Oklahoma and Texas's long-term water security and the potential problems we might face from it under Dr. Richard Elmore. Already, with our current rate of water depletion, the vital resources such as the Ogallala Aquifer could be depleted within the next 25 years. And additionally, climate projections for our regions predict a massive drop-off in rainfall and rise in evaporation. This, coupled with an average rise in temperature and the potential for four times the number of days over 100 degrees by the end of the 21st century, and we're looking at a rapidly shrinking water supply. That's less water coming in and more water going out. And unless we as a population take steps to change the way we view our water supply, we could see the odd water crisis or drought become our new reality. But what would this look like? The last comparable crisis to what's being projected is the Dust Bowl, and many of us are too young to have ever experienced something like this. How will this affect you? And more importantly, why should you care? Well, first, our economy. Oklahoma and Texas's economies are extremely reliant on agriculture. Oklahoma and Texas are ranked fourth and 22nd nationally in terms of agricultural production, and Texas alone accounts for 6% of all farming conducted in the U.S. There's 78,000 farms in Oklahoma as of 2015, and in Texas, one in seven people work in agriculture-related jobs. Additionally, Combined, Oklahoma and Texas grossed $26 billion in 2016 from farming. That's a value higher than the entire gross domestic product of 87 other countries. Agriculture as an industry is extremely reliant on water. Texas and Oklahoma withdrew 3.6 million acre-feet of water in 2010 for irrigation and livestock purposes. That's the equivalent of draining Lake Eufaula, the largest lake in Oklahoma, two times over in one year just for farming. And that doesn't even include the additional water withdrawn for other economic uses. A shrinking water supply would spell disaster for Oklahoma and Texas' agricultural industry. As the water supply shrinks, farms that can't adapt will either collapse or be forced to switch to dryland crops, and this will drastically shrink both the volume and value of our agricultural exports. Sending shockwaves through our economy is one of the region's oldest and most stable industries falters and declines. Second, as our water supply shrinks, it'll become more disputed. Water rights in Oklahoma and Texas are a varying seniority and ownership, belonging from everyone, from major corporations to Native American tribes. Additionally, major water agreements, such as the Red River Compact, govern the rights over shared bodies of water. Already today, with a plentiful water supply, disputes are common. In 2007, Tarrant County, Texas, where Fort Worth is located, sued the Oklahoma Water Resources Board over access to water inside Oklahoma. The suit, Tarrant v. Herman, went all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. Later, in 2011, the Chickasaw and Choctaw Native American tribes sued Oklahoma City over an attempt to divert water from Sardis Lake, what they saw as a violation of the 1830 Treaty of Dancing Rabbit Creek. As these disputes become more common, our state governments will need to have a serious conversation about how water rights are handled moving forward. Should your individual water rights be respected if the town you live in is running out of water? Alternatively, should towns and farming communities be supplied with water if major cities such as OKC and Dallas are running dry? Our country has a long and problematic history of ignoring, of ignoring Native American rights when it suits us and in times of crisis. Will that major treaty just mentioned be upheld if cities, jobs, and infrastructure are all on the line? Much of the water in Oklahoma and Texas stands to be affected by the legal battles that will arise from decreased water security. And as these disputes increase in frequency, it stands to affect the amount, price, and even the access you have to the water around you. Which brings us to our finer, final major impact, the environment. As precipitation decreases and temperatures rise, Oklahoma will see longer droughts, more wildfires, hotter days, and less rain to provide relief. Speaking of wildfires, I've been wondering why I've smelled it all day, and I just realized it's our name tags. <laughs> I have to crack a joke. This is pretty depressing. <laughs> anyway, to exacerbate this situation is our region's existing geology. Oklahoma and Texas sit over top miles and miles of a geologic formation known as Aeolian Dunes. 
These are essentially deactivated desert sand dunes that were active in previous geologic eras. And we have hundreds of acres of them, either sitting latent or just below the topsoil. Research has shown that these dune fields were as active as early as the 1800s, when first explorers came into our region. And further research suggests that a small drop in precipitation and rise in temperature could see them reactivated. That's an active desert in the middle of Texas and Oklahoma. Add to that acres and acres of farmland that can no longer be irrigated, droughts making it impossible for groundwater to reclaim loose sediment, and rain making it impossible for the ground to be held intact. And we're looking at a second dust bowl one that will be more difficult to reverse and even more difficult to contain. Our environment, our economy, and the access to the water around us. These are just three of the major impacts that water security will have on our region should it be depleted. So what can we do about it? Well, first, we can change our individual relationships with water. Oklahoma and Texas withdrew 2.3 million acre feet in 2010 for use in households. That's more water than is in any lake in Oklahoma, gone in a year just for use in our own homes. By making more sustainable lifestyle choices and on a large scale as a whole population, we can drastically extend the lifespan of our existing water supply. Second, we can work and invest in technology and innovation. Progress is already being made on this front today. Farms are experimenting with new technology that cuts water loss to ir from irrigation due to evaporation. Entire cities are working to recycle their water supply to cut down on their usage and with additional withdrawals. These are things you can work on and develop today. This crisis will take everyone from economists to lawyers to engineers to solve. And by working together, we can build a more sustainable future for tomorrow. Lastly, political action. This is perhaps the single most important step we can take to secure our long-term water security. If we are to sustain our standard of living for the next 100 years, we will need to see major differences in the way that our government views and handles water. We need to make sure that in a time of crisis, our government will make sure water rights are distributed equitably, fairly and legally. We need our government to recognize, finally, the social and economic costs of climate change and take steps to make our water sustainable present and in the future. This all starts with you. A politician will not introduce legislation on a subject unless their constituents have let them know it's something they care about. Call your representatives here in Oklahoma or back home in Texas and ask them what they'll do for you if water insecurity was to threaten your home, your job, or your family. Use the ballot box to make your opinion on this issue heard. By working together and taking action today, we can make Oklahoma and Texas leaders in our regional water sustainability. But by failing to recognize this problem and taking the necessary steps, we'll face a much harder and more difficult path to water security in our future. Thank you.